smallmouth bass in a river are not necessarily bigger fish, but stronger because they're fighting the current. Is it on? Oh! Welcome to The New Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Jenna McEwen, and in today's episode, I'm sticking close to home. We're here in the Ottawa Valley with Algonquin fly fishing, and I'm doing something that I've never done before. Oh, oh that's yeah. a nice fish. The fish of the day. Absolutely. We're going to be doing a float trip on a river for small mouth bass. It's gonna be a great episode full of tons of instruction. So stay with us. Ooh, that's a nice sized fish. Good fish. The new Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada, While I've traveled to some truly incredible places, it isn't often that I have the chance to fish close to home, which is why this week's fishing adventure is so special. I'm the guest of Algonquin Fly Fishing, a guiding service based out of Eastern Ontario. Jeff provides guide trips throughout Algonquin Park and the Ottawa Valley. Algonquin Fly Fishing specializes in float trips throughout the Ottawa Valley, an opportunity not often found in this region. Located only one hour from the International Airport in Ottawa and only two and a half hour drive from the US-Canada border. Algonquin Fly Fishing provides accessible options to anglers searching for unique smallmouth bass fishing experiences. It seems a lot of folks fly fish for bass on lakes, and that's a default, I think, because that's accessible, potentially, it's close to where they are. River smallmouth bass fishing is quite a bit different, and it actually intersects a lot with trout fishing, where if you can start to fish the river, you're fishing features on the river. So eddy lines, above rocks, below rocks, looking for different transition zones, dark to deep, deep to shallow. Those are all places that we end up fishing. So much more we look at at a, at a river, a moving environment, it's a new variable, which is a challenge, but it's a rewarding challenge, as, as something that we end up getting to pick apart and, and try to understand where the fish are living within this environment. My own personal lake fishing experience, I, I don't enjoy that as much because it seems like it's a fairly static environment. A river's always moving, and, and that provides, like I said, a variable of challenge, but that also animates the whole day. Basic fishing strategy for rivers, just as, a, as an overview, we're, we're emulating their food, minnows, crayfish, and everybody loves a surface top water, which is frogs or whatever that might be on the surface. So if we look at crayfish and minnows, we have the luxury of having the current on our side. So whenever you cast a streamer into the current and it comes across and below, the, the current is moving the fly for us. So it's animating the fly and it doesn't rely on us as much. And in that way, it's similar to trout fishing, letting that streamer do its action. We then modify that by stripping it, letting it go deeper, shallower, whatever we perceive as the day's needs. Because we're using that river environment, typically things are faster typically strip fast, typically strip deep, and that makes for excitement, right? So good fast hits on those good fast moves. Again, that's different than the lake environment, which I would argue is probably more subtle. And you need to be a little more responsive for slow movements because the fish can be very inspect, right? They can inspect the fly and decide if they want it. Here they got to jump on it, which makes it so much fun. Hi, 
Having grown up within the city of Ottawa, I was thrilled to have the opportunity to explore the many rivers located in the Ottawa Valley. After a short hour drive from the city, I met up with Jeff, who took me down to the river to set up for our first float of the trip. the first day of our float adventure here with Algonquin fly fishing. Jeff, can you tell me a little bit about the river we're going to be fishing on and what our goal is today? Yeah, sure. This is the Petawawa River and it drains the whole northern part of Algonquin Park. And down this far, this low, it's all smallmouth bass. So the goal for today is really to introduce fishing in a Montana style river, long, rolly white water. And we're going to be picking apart little holes and, and finding where the bass are awesome. and then introducing tactics to pull them up. Awesome, I can't wait, I'm so excited. This is a style of float trip that I've never done before, so I'm sure there's gonna be a lot to learn. Let's uh, put on our life vests and get going. Yeah. How we'll make this work, Jenna? From the front of the boat, so this is the bow, you can fish seated or standing up. Most people prefer standing up. You get way better view. You can see fish, you can see down. This thigh bar is for you to lean against. The boat's very stable, it's not gonna flip over. So you can, you can orient yourself whatever you need to. Um, are you right-handed? Yes. Okay, great. Right-handed, whiteys tend to like doing a cross boat cast off to the left. So my job on the oars is to position our boat so you get the best cast. So you're gonna cast out, swing down. All right, we'll talk about that. You can also cross body cast the other way and also roll cast are really effective. Okay. So you can cast out and if you didn't like that one, you can just sweep your tip down, roll cast that shot back out again. And same on the cross body, so you can roll cast. So the casting works. The only thing you can't do casting is a straight ahead 12 o'clock shot. So if our boat is 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock and 3, 12 o'clock goes right over my head. So I you don't, don't get do it to, no, no 12 o'clock. So you can cast this angle, this angle, and you get everything in front of yours is yours to be fishing. Perfect. Right, so this will work. Our basic tactic for smallmouth. Here's what we're gonna look at swinging flies, right? Using the current to bring the fly across from us. We'll be going slower and cast out to the side. There's three spots where we might see hits. So you're gonna cast out like 30 foot cast is typically what we're looking for here. I'll maneuver us into 30 feet off the shore, off the pool, 30 foot cast. Often right on the drop is when they hit it, right? So it's drop, sink, and there's a hit right there. But if that's not it, the current grabs it and swings it. Rarely do smallmouth take on the swing. What we will see is them follow. So we bring them off the bank and we'll watch them follow all the way down to the swing so they will take on the dangle right, right in the very end. So don't rush that, let it swing, let it hang, and the current will be working the fly, that's fine. So there's a second spot, then you're gonna drop your tip, strip, 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 and the other third spot is they take right at the boat. Okay. Right? So, and then you're gonna Flip your line out again, shoot line out to 30 feet, and swing it again. It's kind of nice that you have a few chances if you yeah. don't get discouraged if they're not hitting right away. For sure, and, and bass give you two shots. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool. We'll see you'll see a swing and they'll take a hit on the on the dangle, but they won't take it. Do it again, and there's a good chance that, that fish will do it a second time. If you don't get them on the second shot, that fish is done. And we'll go and find new fish. Awesome. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. This first little bit is really just for you to get a chance to figure out the casting. Perfect. Right, so just to, to get comfortable against the boat and figure out how you're going to make this work. What kind of retrieve would you suggest initially? Like yeah. pretty slow? Um, no, I would say start fast. Okay. The answer is almost faster and deeper. However, yesterday it turned out to be deeper and slower. But, but up here on this top part, we were catching them at full speed, you know, full strips of, of fleeing minnow. You know, that's perfectly appropriate. We slowed it down as we went down river, just to the deeper pools. And we're gonna see lots of different speeds of current, right? So here it's quite slow. So you're the main animation on the fly. Just downstream, the current's gonna pick up and then you can let the current do that job. Okay. And you don't need to strip quite as hard because the current's pulling your fly for you. So if you got the full line out at 30 feet, 40 feet, do a strip set, keep your tip down and, and strip them in. If it's close, so you've stripped them back and it's right here and now you can go tip up. Okay. So 
So, and that's not, not, don't need to be really aggressive, but just tip up to 10 o'clock, put tension on the rod just to get a bend in the rod and keep that bend in the rod. Okay. And with each cast, would you say uh, put out a little bit more line? No. No, just consistently no. with the same amount? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So it drops off, right? Shallow drops the ledges right under your feet. So we're really just gonna like work this pool and where the gets gets bumpy again is where the pool's over. So it's okay. only just a simple 30 foot cast and you don't need to go further. Okay. Bring it right to the boat here because that's where the ledge is, is right under the nose of the boat. And you can just use your tip if you want, right? Just bring your tip over to the left and then you... And would you say pretty, pretty quick on the retrieve? Yeah, start fast and then we'll slow down, yep. There we go. Nice. Very nice. Ooh. Yeah. I might need to. So you got a decent bend in your nice rod. That's yeah, like I was going to say, fish. wow. Yeah. Yeah. Now, would you say that generally speaking, river smallmouth are a bit stronger than lake yeah. smallmouth, just given For they're sure. fighting the current all the yeah. time? And if wow. they get sideways in the current, it doesn't take a very big fish to put a lot of resistance <laughs> on your line. This is definitely more fight than I was anticipating. Holy smokes. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay. This might be a catfish. Really? Maybe. We'll that, see. So is that a possibility Channel here? Channel cat, yeah. Channel cat. That'd Channel be cat cool. really pull. You never know what you're <laughs> going to pull out, I guess. Holy yeah. smokes. That's awesome. Look at his colors. Oh my God. Eddie? This <laughs> is, that's not a catfish. No? Oh wait, is that a? This is a white horse sucker or a red horse sucker. Oh, wow. Holy smokes. That's a big huge. sucker. Look at the size of this thing. Yeah, how do you hold them? Oh, you can't hold them. He's a big guy. Dan, you're right, they suck off the bottom. I want you to cast it before the boat slides over, right? So okay. you can kind of cover that water to the right. Uh, aiming for like the exactly. flat that's water right, right past there. Exactly. There. Yeah, that's it. See right ahead of us how it kind of goes riffle to, to calm? Just yep. cast into that calm water right there. Like just any of those little transition spots are what we're going to aim for. Wanted. Good. Bring it across. Shallow, so keep it moving. So you can see the water's all broken and riffly, which means very shallow. Yep. That's fine. We might scrape a little bit through here. We're heading off to the left because they're kind of drifting down and left where you see the bigger, whiter waves. And there's a drop off, a full ledge. That Basically, that kid's standing on the ledge down there. And uh, we're going to drop in. And just as a drop off, that's where there's fish, right? So it's a guaranteed okay. hit on the drop there. Is that too high up? No, that's okay. No, that's a good spot. And now is that about the length that we want? Yeah, that's reasonable. I'm getting you a, are we bottom again? I'm getting you a leader set up here. Okay. We'll put on your floating line. It might be a little bit less rock averse. Can I give that to you to hold on to just while I get a fly on here? Don't like it hanging in the current, but it makes me nervous. All right, so we're gonna change from your big obnoxious white and we're going to go down much more subtle something much smaller so that's kind of a thin mint variation that's what that's called it's a woolly bugger but it's thin and heavy so it'll cut through the current a little more but not go as deep as that as that sinking tip line and um, hopefully have a little bit more action off this one so sinking tip leader with about two feet of, of leader is all we need of the, of the actual tippet material that's fine and I'm going to put a loop knot on it loop knot gives a little more action to the fly. And unlike a clinch knot that cinches it down, this one gives it some room to bounce and wiggle. And there's no barb on that, FYI. Okay. Okay, I'll trade your rods. Which... Despite the great weather conditions, it took me some time to get the hang of casting and targeting from a drift boat. Luckily, Jeff is a great instructor and gave me some tips. Go down a little bit lower. 
Lower? See, we will go a little lower okay. for you. You can see it's nice pebbly gravelly stuff here. I do. And then some strips back to the boat. And maybe we'll see them right there when they move. Whoa! Nice. Long distance hookup. Well done. Thank you. Right on the strip. That was a very hard hit. <laughs> was it? Cool. <laughs> oh, little fish. You were very hungry for such a hard hit. There we go. Thank you. All right. Pops right out. Yep. Easy, go easy. find some more. standard day with Algonquin fly fishing. It starts in a reasonable hour. So let's say 8 a.m., 9 a.m., depending on the time of year and the temperatures ranges that we're looking at. We provide all the gear, we provide all the instruction. We jump in a boat and get everybody in a life jacket. We provide the rods and the flies. We take care of everything. Really, we're, we're structured to, so that folks can just walk in and enjoy fly fishing for the first time in their life and have the expertise to support the world traveler who wants to go and find somewhere new that they've never thought of fishing before. Can you see where those riffly waves are? There's a rock down there making those riffly yes. waves. He's, in, he's on the front. He's kind of hanging out in the calm water in the front of that rock. So once you you've hire a guide who really knows where they're looking for, they can take you right to the spots where those fish are. Super fun from that perspective. And then you add the new variable of managing the current and the river out of a drift boat. Super fun. Makes, makes smallmouth bass fishing an active day. Like 20 or 30 fish in a day is kind of expected, I would say. Less than that, I'm gonna be disappointed as a guide. Oh, nice fish. Nice Finally. fish. How do you get better at fly fishing? You catch fish. You've gotta catch fish to get good at catching fish, and smallmouth bass is the way to do it. Oh, yeah, that is awesome. Thank you. Oh. After a quick lunch provided by Jeff, we headed back out on the water, hoping to key into the fish for the afternoon bite. Your swing is working, so you're casting it right to the rocks, bringing it out to the middle, and I think you're bringing those fish with you, and then on the strip back to the boat is where they're raising up and coming for it. So it's going over their head and they're following it. And how deep is the water here? 10 feet? Deeper? Under the boat here, it's probably 10 or 12 feet deep. Can barely see the bottom, but the shoreline is just two feet deep and there's a real ledge. So that ledge is where they're hanging oh, on. Follow. Oh, follow. Oh, nice, another follow. Without much success, Jeff suggested we try switching flies. So this is an autumn splendor, which is just a woolly bugger with legs, but it has a movement like a crayfish. So let's put it right to the bottom and bring it out. See if we can get something different, make a different reaction out of them. Try Sounds that one. Sounds good. And boy, was he right. Now that was an aggressive hit. <laughs> hit or miss, hit. Awesome. Oh, wow. And that, I, that is definitely the hardest hit we've had today. Oh, good, good, good. So we, fingers crossed, this has been gonna be the meal ticket. Oh, thank you. Yeah, good. Nice. And mm -hmm. it was really just right off that, yeah, that yeah, drop off yeah, point. Yeah, ledge, yeah. Thank you. Because we're flying, a little brown, this guy's brown as opposed to green. Interesting, huh. his colors. Let me get him up here. The switch had flipped. All right, send your next cast to the right of the boat. We'll try that side. Okay. And it was on. That's what we want. That was fun. That was very nice. Exactly what you said we were <laughs> hoping for. Pretty little fish. There you go, buddy. Oops. Crazy. Nice. Good catch. Thank you. Whoa. Oh, that's a good one. That's a nice fish. Yeah, it's a fat one. That was good. No, that was a hard hit. Was it? Oh, good. Yeah. Is he in? There we go. Sorry, my line got a little good, stuck good, here. Good, good, good. Awesome. All right, now we're getting in the right size. All right, where you go, buddy? Two casts in a row. That's awesome. It's right in that, in front of those boulders. Like. There we go. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I bet you want to get rid of that fly. Very mess there, buddy.
Ah, three in a row. <laughs> Finally keyed in. So there's to what no they want. current here at all, right? So okay. this is totally standing water. So they're way more active in the standing water than they were in the current. Right? Yeah. In the current, they weren't moving. Oh. <laughs> that is awesome. What I was about to say is even even compared to where we were fishing earlier, yeah. we were seeing the fish, we were getting the follows, and yeah. they were just tugging on the yeah. tail. They're so lethargic, and the action here, just even yeah. seeing the fish is so yeah. much different. Way faster. After so much success throughout the early afternoon, we decided to try our luck with poppers. Top water fishing for bass can be so much fun. And with the right water conditions, I was hopeful our luck would continue. And I was right. Right close to the boat. It's like they're hanging out in the darker. Yeah, right on the edge line. Yeah. Right? Nice. Mm. Whoop. Okay. The rapids kind of widen out here into a big, slow drift, and there's a grass line. And right along that edge of that grass line, deep and dark gravel. So that transition line is pretty ideal. And it seems like they're following your, your drift and then coming right up along this dark line which is where you're getting the hits or getting the follows. Yeah. That's where that guy came from. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. All right, let's see if he has any friends. Float trips like this one are great, not only for the fishing, but for the adventure. Then the rapids start right here, which the kayakers put in here and go down through town. So it's kind of the main the main rapids, the main right. drops. That's cool. Yeah. So chance of bumping as we do this little corner, I hang it right here. So don't fall out if we bump a rock. Like that. I have a fish. Trolled him up. I, I guess, apparently. <laughs> I was just trying to roll my shoulders down. <laughs> Goes to show that if you're not paying attention, don't leave your fly in the water. I, I was on a. Oops. Oh, oh that's good size fish. I was about to say. Yeah, good fish. I can't believe the hook got set because I wasn't paying attention at all. <laughs> I was just kind of getting ready to send out my next cast or rolling my shoulders, but man, this popper works. So noisy. <laughs> Is he on? Oh. oh! They just needed your encouragement. That was a nice fish. Oh man, it's, I was popping it. I was right at the end of my, my line. And so when I went to set the hook, my, I just, I didn't have enough room for that. Ooh, that was a nice fish. You notice it was as soon as you said, come on fish, they needed you. They needed <laughs> yeah. your support. That's what yeah, they were right. waiting for. Yeah, right. Oh, that was a nice one. It was really on that pause though. Yeah, yeah. Those are nice casts. Wow. Oh, it's it on, it's on, it's on. Yeah, nicely done. Thank you. Give him another set there. Give him a tug just to make sure he's on. Yeah, you got oh, him. Oh, he's on. You got him, you got him. Whew. That was a lot of work for that fish. <laughs> very, you know what, I feel very well rewarded though. Oh, that it was, is a big fish. Is it? Yeah. Oh, he's, oh, I mean, he's fighting well. Oh, oh that's yeah. a nice fish. The fish of the day. Absolutely. I think he's just about ready here. Oh man, that's a nice fish. He wants that wood, eh? He's I know, going I'm for trying the wood. to, I'm like, <laughs> new, new, new. Oh it's yeah, a fine, he wants to go there. Delicate dance between Putting, keeping pressure to keep him out and also not breaking him off. Oh. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna roll us away yeah, a little bit. Yeah, if you don't mind. So, if he gets under one of those logs, it is game over. Okay, we should be better here. Oh 
Okay. Yeah, we're clear out here. That was an awesome take, and it, it's really fun having that kind of challenge with the overhanging tree. Yeah, those you are get, great casts. Thank you. Yeah. He's not done. He's not done. <laughs> here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, look at that. Look at the stripes. Beautiful. That's a pretty fish. And almost, almost, almost head first. Oh, nope. nope. No, not quite. Not ready yet. Not quite. Making us work for it. <laughs> Okie dokie. And oh. oh, yeah, that is awesome. Thank you. That's awesome. Oh. Holy, look at this fish. With such an exciting first day under my belt, I couldn't wait to see what tomorrow would bring. What a beautiful fish to end the day. For our second day of fishing in the Ottawa Valley, Jeff took me to the Ottawa River to float a different part of the waterway than we had the day before. Here we are, day two on the Ottawa River. We're now downstream of where we were yesterday. The Petawawa comes into the Ottawa, and we're here to fish all through these islands on this nice, slow moving current all through here. Smallmouth bass, bigger fish today is what we're gonna be looking for. Awesome. So, the magic Ottawa River flies, check these out. Um, these are tied by one of my clients named Sam Mead, and this one here, he's worked on over the last three or four years to be the Ottawa River well, it's obviously an attractor, maybe a crayfish, but we'll start with this one. Great. Uh, yesterday we found that we needed a little more subtle, but typically the Otter River is a little more flash because it's bigger water, more current, and we end up having to try bigger flies. That's what we'll start with. Sounds good. All Let's right. get out there. Jen, I think we'll leave your popper on from yesterday, and there's some nice, calm, sheltered pools here, and then we'll put one of the heavy flash on your sinking tip. Okay, start perfect. With that. Yeah, let's start with that. Do you find, though, that on overcast days, poppers are less successful? Yeah. Because the weather's really changed from yesterday to today. Yeah, I'm, I'm counting on us blowing out, and that's what the radar looks like it's gonna do, okay. so, so let's play with that plan. Perfect. mishap with my sunglasses on our way in today and as you may know if you watch our show a lot wear your sunglasses when you're fly fishing it's just a safety precaution with flies flying through the air and I am known to be a bit of a magnet for bad things so thankfully Jeff had an extra pair of sunglasses he loaned me uh, but they don't exactly suit me quite as well as my other ones doesn't matter though safety first so this is a place where actually a reach mend cast would work. Okay. Because as soon as you hit, you're getting dragged, right? It's, yeah. It's, so, so there's an example of we'd like to give the fly a bit of a head start. So 
So you can just practice these a little bit before like we that, do it. Like that, So so that's a, a water mend. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you about a, a casting mend. Okay. So an aerial mend, meaning you've done in the air. So you do your cast. So back cast stop, forward cast stop. You're gonna stop a little higher, and as soon as you stop, the loop is formed, right? And it's and it's sailing past you. As soon as you stop, boop, you go 90 degrees off to your right hand so. side. Back cast so, stop, forward cast stop. Yep, like exactly. There that you go. in theory, that, but that, better? No, that's exactly it. That's what you're looking for. So then you're going to have your tip right out to 90 degrees, and the line should be a straight, the, the fly line should be straight from your tip to the fly if you do a really nice one, right? It's one straight shot. Okay. If you're a little late, so stop, pause, you actually, your line will have a bend in it because you only kind of affected half your line. So, so you can try, just try that. But okay. if you get the timing, it's a stop, reach, and then, you're, so, then you've got it. Like that? Yep, that's it. Yep. And the fly has a bit of a head start on you, right? And you've got the line upstream already. You won't get that big belly in it. The instant belly. Stop, reach, good. Yeah, and then you can water mend all you want, right? But but that first aerial mend sets it up so that you get a decent drift without slack in it. I don't like aerial the water mends because they put slack in your line. Okay. Right, so that makes your line, now your line's going through the water in a big S bend, and if you do need to set, that's a lot of line between you and the fish. Aerial man, still a straight line between you and the fly. So if there is a take on that first drop. Like that? You can, exactly, then you can do f just to strip them in and you've got straight tension to your fly. I'll try and get this next one out. Oh. oh yeah! Woo! Let's see here. Whoop. There we go, awesome! First fish. Thank you. Yep. What was that? Five minutes into the day? That was yeah, good. very quick. <laughs> yep. And I'm really liking this reach cast. I think it's really helping my presentation. Come on. There we go. There we go. Thank you. There's our little first fish of the day. So should I still be doing the, mm -hmm. the reach cast? Um, no, so, so the test is this. If you drop your line mm -hmm. and it stays square, you know, there's no need to mend, right? Okay. And it's just gentle current here. Um, it really is only an issue if the current's significantly different speed than what we're doing. We were standing still in fast current there, right? Mm -hmm. So, boom, line hits the water and, and like bellied out right okay. away. So if it doesn't belly out right away, then no need to mend or only just do little reach mends as, or just gotcha. water mends as you need to. Okay. But for my money, honestly, I'd prefer to stay in touch with the fly, right? I think that's more important is to not have slack. Even if it's bending, that's fine. There's no slack. You're, you're, you're touching the fly. Every time you mend, you put slack, and you've got to gobble that slack up. I understand. Okay. That yeah. makes sense. Let's change this out. Okay. So we'll go from big and flash, which we caught a couple fish on already, had a couple follows and they turned and left, so that might have offended them. So we're gonna go, really, it's a black thin mint would be that version. So heavily weighted tungsten, really thin though. We'll see if that makes a difference. We'll try to fish this rock line again, which normally should produce some fish. So we'll try that. Okay. On an overcast day like today, do you find that here on the Ottawa River, darker flies are more effective? There's, that's, that's kind of one of the fly fishing mantras, is dark day, dark fly, bright day, blight mm -hmm. fly. There's really just a small number of flies that work here. There's really only four or five, and we can kind of pull them all out later, but uh, it really doesn't seem to make that much of a difference in that direct of a correlation. And that was just right past the little drop off there. Whoop. Here, little buddy. Sweet. Right on the drop from the shallow yeah, to deep. Like yeah, right at that yeah. transition point. Yeah. All right. I bet they're just waiting right off that ledge. Thank you. All right. Looks like this, this fly change might be See the. See what we can do. Fish. Awesome. See him. That, and that was, that was a harder hit than I got on the other fly. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. There you 
go. Doesn't matter how bad your cast is. <laughs> Fish don't care. Oops. Jumpy. There we go. Hmm? Excellent. Your fly is free. This is awesome. There we go. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> He's full of lights, this guy. So off this rock wall okay. and that island, it's all shallow. It's like a shallow shelf full of big blocks in here. So we'll kind of hang out here so it's not deep. So don't let it sink too much. Gotcha. Oh, he's got him. He he's got him. Get him. Get him. Oh, oh my gosh. This is. Oh. <sighs> let's, well, sharp, let's sharpen that. We up. switched up the fly, and we came to this area that has a lot of big boulders, some fallen trees, and a pretty steep drop off. And this has been far more productive than anywhere else the fish seem to be turning on. We actually, I hooked into a small bass, and a big one came and tried to eat it, and just. Super cool to see. So hopefully we can keep working the shoreline and uh, get a fish in the boat. Smallmouth bass spawn in in late May and early June, whenever their temperature is kind of in the low 50s. And they're, as a species, their imperative is to get big for their first year. Because if they can get big enough, then they can survive the winter and then they're going to survive. So if it's a sparse year with not a lot of food, you can use a whole, lose a whole year class of fish because they don't get big enough to survive the winter and make it into their second year. Ooh, fish. Wow. Acrobatic. Holy cow. That's awesome. <laughs> nice. Oh man, I love those jumps. That's so fun. What's the name of the pattern or what type of pattern are we using? Whoa. <laughs> we have a fish jumping in the background. This is just a generic crayfish that I tie of my own. Dumbbell eyes, little little claws on them, nothing fancy. Well, they seem to love it. I can see why you tie them. Nice. Oh. Nice, good. Awesome. And he was really just Solid right off fish. the shore there. You like that? It's gone. So this guy's really deep. He really took this. So it's usually in their tongue, hopefully, if that's easier. And you push it back down their throat. That's right, I've got his bottom lip so he can't go too far. Push it back down their throat. Hopefully it just releases and pops out. That's why you crush your barbs. If you need to, you can get your pliers in there, but hopefully it goes just by hand. There we go. One push down the throat and then it comes back up. Whoa. Oh, holy. Torpedo. Drive-by drive shooting. <laughs> he hammered that. <laughs> holy smokes. Nope. There we go. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Let's spit that out. Awesome. Little guy. It's full of life. Full of grass. Oh, good fish. Good size. Okay. Jump him, jump, jump. Nice. Look at him. I'm pretty sure I saw another fly. Oh, wow. That's awesome. He's mad. I'm pretty sure I saw another one hit him, too. Come on, where is it? There we go. Mm. Woo. Nice. Man, these river fish are strong. This that is such a fun some, fight to have. That guy had some pull. After a morning full of success, Jeff suggested we pull off on shore to grab a bite. After lunch, I was able to chat with Jeff a little more about the flies he suggests for fishing this area. For gear, here's what we're looking at. A six weight rod or a seven weight rod. Six weight rods are nicer to cast. I see a real step between a six and a seven. A seven's a lot heavier and it's quite a bit more to bend the rod, but we use heavy flies. So beginners, often a six, sometimes a seven, whatever they can accomplish. Sometimes full floating line, sometimes floating line with a sinking tip leader if we need to get a little lower and that's much easier to cast. And sometimes a full sink tip line. We don't need to go full sinking line. In river current, that's actually kind of tough to manage that. Earlier in the, the summertime, whenever the fish are hungry, the water's a bit cooler, it seems like surface is much more common. We, we can be, we can be just this far under the water and that's fine. As the, the summer progresses, water gets warmer, fish get a bit lazier, need to go a bit deeper, and there's a little more work to try to find the flies. And we've been doing that today with Jenna, is cy cycling through different flies to find the right combination of the day. I find early in the season, right after their spawn, they kind of eat whatever they want. So opening day for bass is really fun because they're super hungry and they're a lot easier. 
more and more skill, more and more technique involved as we go as we move our way along. Primarily around that stripping streamers, right? That's kind of the, the family that we'd be talking about as opposed to the poppers or the, the surface water. That itself, a six or seven weight floating line, that works fine. Uh, the bigger the popper, the heavier the line that you're gonna need. And that works in a river environment. We do a little less popping than you would on a lake because we don't see that same kind of food necessarily, nor do we necessarily have the nice calm, placid water that popping works best on. If there's always current and broken water, popping doesn't really work that much. And that's in that case where we use streamers or crayfish, something along those lines instead. shore lunch, I was eager to get back on the water with Jeff for my final afternoon of fishing. The current is, comes right through here really fast. So okay. we're going to back rip the eddy line, swing it out in the current, bring it to the eddy line and strip it back up. So we'll okay. go around and around there. Expect it to be right on the eddy line. Okay. Perfect. So that's going to swing that eddy line nice and then straight through. like this. Yeah, then strip it up. Yeah. And that's where I'd expect to see them is bring it right to the boat. Okay. Now this is the type of fishing that is very akin to fishing for, for trout. Yep. I can imagine a lot of trout anglers, this would be a fun new experience for them, getting to do these t similar tactics, but for a different species. So yes, yeah. and catching a lot more fish, typically. Mm -hmm. Smallmouth are more aggressive and you get more in a day, typically. So I'm going to head out there, throw that rock is into the middle, and then you can cast back to that guy. Okay. So it'll be a right hand cast. Let's get out to the middle. And then we're going to head to the far shore and we'll fish up that other current line over there. Sounds good to me. We would not be able to do this in the raft yesterday. Like we're just kind of hanging in mid-current here. Mm -hmm. The raft's got way too much drag and it would not do this. So this is a place where actually a reach bend cast would work. Yeah. Yeah, so try reaching it up. Okay. Just a difference in current speed. Down there we didn't need it because it wasn't quite as fast as it is here. Pulling your line out. Good, perfect. As soon as that stop happens, boom, and then you can move. But your first priority is to get the loop in front of your tip, and then you move the loop. <laughs> now he's downstream of us. Do we no. just do we just chase rises all day now? <laughs> so, can you see where those riffly waves are? There's a rock down there making those riffly yes. waves. He's on the front. He's kind of hanging out in the calm water in the front of that rock. So, okay. I'm gonna move us a little more left, and you can just swing him down and. If you could swing it right in front of those riffles, not all the way to the riffles, just in front of those riffles. Okay. That's my guess is where he is. We like that? We won't be subtle. Yeah, we're just going to put it in his nose and make him move on it. Oh. Oh yeah, touch. Good. That's where he should be, right there. Hmm. No. I hit, he hit it. Something hit oh, it. Oh, really? Okay. Unless it's like knocking against something. Well, there's a rock there. So, Jenny, you okay. see on, our, on my left, on river left, so if the downstream current, right, that's always left, that's always right, no yes. matter which way you're looking. So the rock pointed out there. I do. We're gonna start low in the eddy below that rock and we're gonna creep right up. The current's a little slower and you can just keep dropping it right to the rocks and pulling okay. them off the rocks there. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> I don't know how well I set the hook on that because I was... That's good. <laughs> I was about to pull my fly up. They, whoa, not only are they acrobatic, they are definitely not afraid yeah. to come super close to the boat. Yeah. So if you're not sure about your set and you've got a good bend in your rod, he's yeah. loaded, you can just give it another little tap and that's okay. that's a second set. And if it's, it might pop, but it would have popped anyways, okay. or you actually get a good solid set then. Oop. Okay, that's a very good tip. Sometimes it's just, it's happened so close to the boat, you don't really have much to set the line yeah, with. For sure, oh. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Thank nice. you, Jeff. That's fine. Nice, solid medium size. 
Yeah. Nice. Got it. Ooh. Good one. Ha! All right, buddy. Good one. There we go. It's right off those rocks, too. Hey! Nice. No messing around. Straight to the net. This guy. <laughs> We had finally made our way to the part of the river I was most looking forward to, the Big Rapids. He keeps hitting That's it. Good. I don't have enough line out to set the hook. Good. So if you're fishing just on your leader like that, set yeah. straight up. Don't don't okay. yank it that way. Go up. So you go shoot you. There you go. Up, up, up. There he's on. It's a good one. <laughs> no. And he's off. All right. That's good fish. I know. <laughs> I'm so You'll come back. He didn't get a good bite on it, so he, he's still in game. It's like musky fishing, eh? Under the oh boat. Oh my gosh. There he Hit is. It. Oh yeah. Oh, oh. oh my gosh. So straight That's, up with the with the leader, or like pull up with the yeah, rod. Yeah, tip up. Yeah, tip goes tip goes up to ten or eleven. Yeah. Yeah, because you're leader fishing, it's so easy to yank it out of his mouth, right? So you want to just go change direction with it. I just, or you can do full change of direction if you have the frame of mind to do like a full set the opposite direction. Awesome. I just saw him again. Yeah. Holy shit. He's sucks. still in game. That's I think a nice fish. He's still playing that guy. Ooh. Oh, you had to follow there too. Oh, did I? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think they're just swirling around underneath it, right? Trying to decide what it is. Ugh. Oh my gosh. Ouch. That was a heavy hit. And uh, oh, 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 my line's all messed up. I was just about to pull it out because <laughs> when the lot, when I, it's, it's my fault. Hey, no, it's fish's fault. Blame the fish. Such a good job of making me feel better, Jeff. <laughs> that was a very hard hit. And it's just like the, there we Are go. Are you clear? Yeah. Slow on a second. Thank you. You're welcome. What? It's like it went, it's like my, ugh. <laughs> I, I set that, you saw me. It was on I the line. I set that hook. It was on the line. Oh, come on. Oh, they're right there. Oh, they're all over it. Oh. Oh, okay, go up. You're going up. That's good. No strip, though. Okay. okay so cut the strip out. So just like set it, rod yeah, set it. That's okay. right. Just like, bunk, brakes on, set up. Let him have it, right? You're not trying to let it take it away from him. Right. Back off. Like that? Oh, that's a big guy. Oh, no. Ah. Oh, my. I pulled up. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> they are awesome. just that everywhere awesome. here, and they are hungry. I'm going to get the hang of it. OK, there you go. So in that, what did I do wrong there? Mm. Just. I don't think you do anything wrong. Bad it's super friend, uh, it's super frantic and fast, right? So yeah. they're moving fast and you're moving fast. There's a lot of them. That Holy one came out while he's in the air. So that's yeah. the way that goes, right? Okay. Jumping, it's a gamble what happens, who knows? So now you see there's this little current coming in the side. Yep. 
So where that current comes in and hits the eddy line over there, it's really swirly again. Yep. So it's kind of the same thing we're doing on the other side. It's going to be kind of tight, bouncy fishing, but tight little location. You can cast all around this swirly water and pull the line through it. Yeah, that, there's that foam. There's the other side with the foam, all this stuff in here. And same thing, the fish will be in close quarters and just kind of turn what? right there. Oh, and turn back. Oh, you on? Oh, nice. Ah. So close. Up, up, Jenna. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, you got him. You got him. Good for you. <sighs> Swear, if you jump off, Mr. Fish. Oh, this is a nice bass. Okay, 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 and... Oh, yeah, good one. Oh, oh where is he? You got him. Oh, <gasps> nice fish. Nice Finally. fish. <laughs> nice. Finally. <laughs> Hold up. After all that hard work. Man, this is fun, though. Uh, almost missing them and like having to work for it a little bit almost makes it yeah, like yeah 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 I feel very sure. rewarded. But that was fast, right? Oh, it's like it's instant like instant hit. Yeah. Two strips and yep. they're after it. Yeah. So I mean, I guess they, they have to be aggressive. Everything exactly. moves so fast. Yeah, here. it's so fast in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why it's that's why it's so so stressful fishing is because everything's moving so yeah, fast. Oh man, my heart is like pumping. <laughs> awesome. Jeff, thank you so much for such a fantastic trip. I've had so much fun and learned so much. Like you truly are the perfect educator, whether you're a novice or an expert here on the river. If you want to learn more about Algonquin fly fishing or our show, visit us on the web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. The New Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,